All right, here's Chevy number three. Keys out just the way it sits, and it looks like the brake lights are on. If you look at the filaments, like the bright filament is on there. Also, the reverse bulb is a dual filament. I don't know if that's correct or not. And then this one, looks like the brake lights are always on. If we turn the taillights on, the little filament lights up like it's supposed to. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. And then the little filament on the reverse light lights up, and the filament on this one lights up. So how is that, how does that make any sense? And it's the same on both sides. All the filaments are on one, two, three, four, five, six. That makes zero sense to me. Obviously, we'll scan it for codes, and all the lights here are controlled by the body control module. Let me pop the key in. And the code is left rear turn signal circuit open, passed, and failed. So if we clear that out, will it come right back? No. Let's press the brake pedal. Nothing changed. They're still all bright. What if we actually put it in reverse? And look, the reverse camera is always on no matter what gear you're in. Okay, let's see that. Nothing changed there. And well, the uh, high mount is on. Brakes off, that one's off. No change here, they're all full bright. <clears throat> and what else do we wanna try? Let's try hazards. The brightness of this film is changing maybe slightly. The brightness of this one is changing a little more. All of them. Okay. I want to pop these taillight assemblies out and take the bulbs out and then put them in one by one and see if that restores anything. The history is, you know, I think the owner replaced a front wheel bearing, then his right light was stuck on, and then he checked the grounds and now all of his lights are stuck on. So pretty crazy. All right, so here are all the bulbs. Um, so I think the next easiest thing to do is right down here we have the plugs for the taillight assemblies. So this one goes to the left side, this one goes to the right side. So I'm plug them here. It's a five pin on each one and we can see uh, the dark green is the brake lamps, light green is the uh, reverse, brown is tail, and then black is ground. So we just have to worry about four pins. And they go like that. Now let's check with a test light that has a known good ground, so it's going to light up if it finds a power. Well, first we can even check just the ground pin, all right? So pop that in here. If we find a ground, it's going to light up nice and bright. So the ground pin is going to be on the left side here, bottom row. So let's do that. Okay, there it is. It's good on that one. It's good on that one. Okay, so now test light from battery negative finds a positive. It's going to light up. Let's see if any of these pins are hot with the truck off. It's on the white connector. No, no. Wow, look at that. Bright light there. Bright light there. And that's our ground. So these two are bright on the black connector. Bright light there. Bright light there. Ground, ground. So which ones are those? Brake and reverse are hot on this one. And on the white one, brake and reverse 
are hot on the white one too. What the heck? How is that? They're both hot. They both light up my test light brightly. So what the heck is going on on the truck side of this thing? It's sending voltage to these connectors. We have to look at a diagram of the BCM by the uh, codes, you know, the RPO codes. See what controls these rear lights. Okay, so um, for the reverse lights, you see they're, they're dim right now. But if I do a bi-directional test and I see active, look, they get brighter. And inactive, and let's go back to active. Okay, there's a short circuit somewhere for sure because the driver's turning on. Well, for some reason, there's voltage on that filament, so it's a single filament for the reverse. I was wrong about. That. It looks like it's a dual filament, but that's because that's a reflecting this one. If you look through there, it's a single filament. But the reverse and the brake pins on both sides have voltage. Alright, so we'll do the active test for the right um, brake and turn signal. So if I hit active, see it gets brighter. I hit inactive, it gets slightly dimmer. Let's try the left one. Now that one was setting a code. So left trailer, no not trailer. Left turn signal stop lamp, yes. So I'll hit active. We'll see if we can uh, pick this up. And active. Did it get brighter? Inactive. Active. Inactive. No, no change. Hmm. How about that? So that code, I'm sure it's set again. Hmm, no fault code, interesting. All right, so here is the wiring diagram for uh, the rear lights. Body control module, we have three drivers. So this driver in the middle turns on this trailer backup lamps relay. And then when that closes, it should send power to both reverse lights. So why do we have power on the reverse lights? That should be easier to track down. This F3310 amp, is that hot? Right now with the truck off, let's, uh, let's take a look under the hood. This is the under hood fuse box. So under the hood, I took this cover off, and I'm smelling like burnt electrical smell. This is not promising, <laughs> but um, fuse 33 right there, and I'm sorry about the glare, it's going to be backup lamp 10 amp, right there. That would be this one, and look, sure enough, nice and bright, and where's the backup lamp relay? So if you look at relays, let me find that one, we'll pull that out and see if the backup lights go out. Well, we know all of the wires have to go through this fuse box, so what we can do is just unplug the fuse box, this X5, um, X5 pin A2 is one output, pin A3 is another output, then K4, K2, C1, all on X5. So we need to find this X5 connector and just unplug it, this it looks like a bad fuse box. Well, fuse box is out of the way and we have one melted pin right there but this whole thing smells like burnt electronics and you can see you know it's circuit board there's drivers on there it's not just not just fuses and contacts it's more complicated than that so I'd say before going too far we need a new one of these from the dealer we'll 
fix that pin. We can see where it goes just by the pinouts. And then, but yeah, there's a short circuit somewhere, and and that's not a. It's shorting, you know, the brake and the reverse circuit to positive, which is not good. Okay, so what's a quick way to check if this fuse box? I mean, it smells fried. But are these circuits that go to the tail lights and the reverse lights, are they shorted to battery positive? Well, we have the pinouts right here. And from the wiring diagram, we know that A2 is the left brake light, A3 is the right brake light, and C1 is the backup lights on both. So back to here, there's A1. A2, A3, and C3. So let's check those pins with a test light. Now, just the regular test light, connect it to ground. If it finds a positive, like this main positive stud, it's going to light up. So this is X5. So we're going to be worried about these pins right here. So the middle one that was melted, check it out. It's shorted to battery positive. This fuse box, the only connection it has to the truck right now is this main positive lug, nothing else, and that pin is short to battery positive. Isn't that insane? Um, let's check the next one, A3, so this should be going to the right tail light. Look at that. That's shorted to battery positive. That one's shorted to battery positive. And then the reverse light's going to be C1. That one's shorted to battery positive, so it all makes sense. This whole, these pins are all shorted to battery positive when they're not supposed to be. You know, that, that blows my mind. So these are just supposed to be pass-throughs. You know, we want to make sure that the BCM isn't sending anything on like X3A1 or X3C1. But this fuse box, that's it. It burned up. Truck is only six years old. 70,000 miles, no, no corrosion, no green crusties, just plain junk. All right, a little bonus footage. We can check the wiring integrity from the fuse box through the bulbs by using a 4 amp or a 5 amp test light. And for example, that pin should go to the right brake light. And it does. See, this one's off. Move it next door to the crusty burnt pin. That should light up the left. There we go. And the reverse lights is going to be on pin C1, which is this one right here. You want to make sure, like, see, the lights are dim. So the reverse lights should be pretty bright. We're done. This thing needs a fuse box. Crazy stuff. Well, that was a fun uh, set of Chevy trucks. Let's do a quick follow-up on each one because I know people like closure on these case studies, and I do too, so I do my best to follow up with you know, the shop that uh, had these trucks and perform the, uh, the, you know, my recommended repairs. So the first one with the reduced power complaint, the intermittent throttle position correlation code. The uh, the owner, he didn't want to spend 500 bucks for an OEM throttle body. So Bill, the shop owner, he went to the junkyard and picked up a used OEM throttle body. Put it on. Truck has had no glitches since then. So Chevy number one fixed OEM throttle body. Uh, Chevy number two, we fixed on the spot, no parts required. Had a case of the green crusties, one ABS wire and that um, fuel pump module enable circuit wire, both completely corroded through. So that one has been uh, flawless since the repairs. Chevy number three, the newer one, 2018, with the brake and reverse lights stuck on, we found that the fuse box was internally shorting those circuits to power. Crazy stuff. That thing smelled like, you know, the burnt electrical smell. So, brand new OEM fuse box from the dealer. Uh, I think it was around 200 bucks. 
and uh, Bill when he got picked up that fuse box the dealer said that they uh, have been selling these quite a bit I think uh, maybe four f new fuse boxes just this year so uh, and that fixed the uh, lights issue hmm so what uh what's the takeaway here uh, GM's by far I would say have the most uh, electrical harness problems in terms of over 10 or 20 years something rubs through wire corrodes and usually those you can fix no parts required however that newer one that's that's concerning the truck is six years old 70,000 miles no corrosion or anything on the fuse box or the harness but the thing just freaking fried itself that's embarrassing <laughs> and you can't fix that no parts required it's not serviceable I mean you could probably tear the fuse box apart and find whatever is burnt up in there but that kind of sucks so you know what happens when they stop making these fuse boxes and they become obsolete and then all the other ones are burnt up you gonna throw your truck away maybe I guess they're making them more disposable so that's a trend that I'm seeing but all the trucks are back on the road and are doing just fine. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.